The Blood Angels might just be the strongest faction in the game. With their new codex, there might have been some changes that make you think this army got a nerf, but we're here to tell you this is pretty much as strong as it gets in 40k. We're going to tell you more about it right after this. So the Blood Angels are strong, and it's not really necessarily obvious what makes them so strong. Yeah, that's true. So we're going to go through five or six things, kind of the, the big reasons mm -hmm. that make them so strong, even though we're going to talk about the things that got nerfed for the book, um, yet it doesn't matter. This army <laughs> actually took a nerf with their codex. That's true, that's true. And it, they're still the strongest faction, we think. They lost a lot of uh, elements that, were, they, that made them very iconic in their playstyle, yeah. and yet the ways in which they have changed and the game has changed actually makes them arguably, we think, possibly the best faction in the game currently. Absolutely. Well, one of the first things we're going to talk about is the chapter tactic and super That's doctrine, right. right? Now, every Space Marine chapter has these, and they range from being uh, completely impractical and not useful at all. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Imperial Fist. Um, all the way up to this, which we think is arguably the strongest chapter tactic. Right. And one of the reasons we're saying that is because, um, well, first of all, if you don't know, it's plus one to wound. Plus one to advance and charge. Yep. And then your super doctrine is just a straight plus one attack. Okay? So your super doctrine you only get during the assault doctrine. Now, the reason this is so crucial is for an army that wants to be all close combat units, mm -hmm. all of these buffs stack together and are always effective. They're right. effective in every, on every one of your combat units all the time. And since virtually your entire army is combat units, mm -hmm you're always getting this benefit. It's incredibly synergistic. And the fact yeah. that um, the plus one to wound is a really, really amazing ability in the, in the sense that it actually kind of yeah. transcends most uh, stats, right? You're not, you're not really caring about toughness. You're not caring about strength. That's right. It's a, it's a flat plus one to wound, which makes even your most basic units, intercessors, or even below that, eradicators that don't even want to be fighting in yeah. melee, that much scarier. And so it's, it's a boost that works all the time. Um, whereas many of the chapter and tactics... And it's a big boost. It's such a huge boost. Yeah. I mean, many, you know, most... most uh, uh, chapters are lucky, or even factions are lucky to get plus one to, to wound for a command point. Right. And then you get cost more. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's exactly all the time. Right? Almost any faction that has a plus one to wound strat, yeah. we think like, ooh, that's probably really a strong nice. strat. This is yeah. army wide, <laughs> no CP. Now I think about this, like Salamanders want to consider one of the strongest factions. That's right. Ignore one AP. Right. That only happens when there is one AP, which exactly. is actually not all that often. Right. Or you think about uh, White Scars, mm -hmm. who are getting things like um, plus one damage. Right. Plus one damage, amazing. Mm -hmm. But that only matters against things with two or more wounds. Exactly. Especially nowadays when you're talking about things like uh, invincible blobs of necrons. Yeah. Lots of bodies with, with single wound. Well, um, ultimately, uh, an extra attack is going to work just as well on things with two wounds. Yeah. Um, and it, and it's, it's a more flexible type of output. So the White Scar is incredibly powerful against many opponents. But there's still... Uh, a number of situations in which it's not as useful, right? And, yeah. and obviously there's more specific chapter tactics like obviously talking about fists and things like that that only work on bolt weapons. That's right. Plus one to wound, plus one to advance and charge, plus one attack and super doctrine. These things are amazing almost all the time, yeah. right? As they long take as any, them. They take any of your units and they, they take it up to 11. Yeah. So that's where you've got to... You really got to hand it to them right there. Yeah. You could take any unit and you could say, wow, that would be better as a Blood Angel, <laughs> right? It's so true. S especially any of the new models. Yes, 100%. That's really big. Well, yeah. the other one, and this is a hard one to understand, but you often win in 40K when you choose where and when to fight. Yes. And we think that the Blood Angels have considerable advantages about choosing the engagements. Yeah, that's right. And this is where they start to actually differ. Uh, uh, change a bit from where they used to right. play, right? They used to have the ability to immediately re-deep strike somewhere, do these long bomb charges, 3d6, things like that. Um, yeah. Now, while they don't have that anymore, they actually don't need it as much, right? Ninth edition right. is, first of all, very much about the mid-board. Yeah. It is a smaller board, first of all, right? Um, and the thing is, they can choose their engagements in a way that almost no other army can, right? Again, yeah. thinking about White Scars, right? Your average intercessor, they can advance and charge. That's great. So you're going, what, 6 plus a d6? Well, often your Blood Angels units are jump troops. That's correct. So they're already moving 12, choosing their engagement, ignoring terrain with fly. And so it's really important uh, for them to actually be able to stay completely hidden yes. and then engage on their own terms, right? Exactly. Now, as you pointed out, this was always a strength of the Blood Angels army with their deep strike. But we're arguing even without deep strike, it still is mm -hmm. because you're, again, you're, tar you're from your deployment zone to the middle of the board. It's right. not that far. And not only do you move 12 inches, but you can move 14 if you want. There's right. a banner for a banner. plus two inch to move. <laughs> so your ability to say, I'm going to pick when we fight and who mm -hmm. fights against what, 
that means you're all you're never going to pick a losing battle. That's right. Right? And there's not many battles they lose to begin with. <laughs> no, that's and true. And the few that they could lose, yeah. you get to pick where and when mm -hmm. because you're just that much faster than most opponents. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And that's that's kind of a huge thing. Yeah, absolutely. And this actually leads us to another point, another major um, asset to the Blood Angels is the fact that they actually control the offensive pacing of the game overall. That's right. And this one's also a bit difficult to, to explain, so it's going to take, take a number of things. Um, thinking about the fact that they're an Assault Doctrine army, for example, right? right? Assault Doctrine, traditionally, um, you can only get from turn three onwards. Yes. And so what this has meant for them in the past, and still means for, for White Scars and, and Space Wolves and things like that, is your, the majority of your army can't actually be using that Doctrine until that, that, that point later on. That's right? correct. You yeah. have to be waiting, biding your time. Yeah. You're kind of playing down the first couple turns of points. Um, well, this is not true anymore, right? For yeah. Blood Angels, they have actually have a way of, of, of uh, unlocking this immediately. They have the best way, right? And that's the Sanguinary Priest. That's right. The Sanguinary Priest is such an unbelievable auto-include in every army because what he does, not only is he an apothecary, which great to me. is crazy. And you can make him a cheap apothecary. Yes, you can because there's no god. Why not? And um, <laughs> then what you could do is you could take a unit and make it count as being in the Assault Doctrine that's and right. then pay a command point and do it again. Mm -hmm. So starting right from the first turn, you could have up to two units counting as Assault Doctrine. Now, yes, this gives you the extra AP, mm -hmm. and as the rules are written today, um, it's pretty controversial whether you get the extra True. attack or not. We here on the channel mm -hmm. firmly believe that that was the intention, yeah. and so that's the way we play, and that is very, very strong. Yes, right? absolutely. It's incredibly powerful, and um, it, the wording of it, it helped in the sense that it was rewritten a little bit from the index to sort of reconfirm that uh, it, it's probably the way that we're already playing it. So that's, yeah. again, you're not likely to be doing all this stuff just for an extra AP, right? That's right. Um, but the extra attack, it's so powerful to immediately say, okay, um, not one unit, because you know all Space Marines have the access right. to adaptive strategy, that's which gives you all three doctrines for two command points on a single unit, um, which is good, but you're paying a lot for extra things you might not necessarily need. Correct. And obviously it's only on a single well, unit. Well, you could now have three units in you the Assault have, You could have, <laughs> oh wow, I didn't even think about that. You could That's have right. three units. So your ability to engage early on if you want to, or hold back and just yeah. put things on the points, is incredibly powerful and absolutely not the way that Blood Angels used to play, right? That's right. Every time I play Blood, Blood Angels against them, it was always about screening them out, making them yeah. really pay for those first couple of turns until they can really hit me hard and, and actually do that scoring. Nowadays, they're lethal control, right from the start. It's the opposite. Yeah, you have that control yeah. of the pacing of the game. Very, very well, important. Well, and with so much access to the Space Marine Codex, yeah. and with all these great new Indominus units, mm -hmm. which all are cheap, That's right. durable, and they're actually great combat units, this means that Blood Angels have the ability to have all of a sudden these kind of chaff combat units yeah. that are incredibly lethal. And what they can do is you can start the game by using them as pawns. Yeah. We're gonna move them out onto <laughs> points. Yep. I'm gonna keep my big hammers with the jetpacks safe behind the walls. Mm. And at any point, when you try to take my pawns, my pawns are gonna take a pound of flesh from you. That's right. Because they're Blood Angels Blade Guard or something like that. Yeah. Right? They're already super tough to remove. They're already super crazy. Yeah. But then when you bring someone tough enough to kill Blade Guard, cool, I'm just gonna counter punch with Sanguinary Guard. Exactly. And that, that control that you have, the fact that your hammers and your pawns are all so strong and they're all so cheap. Uh, means you just have a lot to play with. Mm. And uh, again, you control your super doctrines, you control where and when you engage, and you have so many units that you can throw them away and chip huge chunks off your opponent's army. It's, it's massive control over the pacing of the game. It really is. That's right. Now, you have all this ability to actually choose how, how you're engaging, but That's you right. also uh, need to be able to actually hold the point, right? Some armies yeah. can take the point, can't really hold it so well. Yeah. Luckily, these are still Space Marines, and they're incredibly durable. There's a number of ways they can actually do this, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that is, is really exciting, has, and has been exciting since actually the launch of the new Space Marine Codex, is the fact that you get things like the Rights of War, uh, Warlord trait. What this does is it essentially it says any of your core units within six of the, the bearer of this Warlord trait uh, gets objective secured. Yeah, and this is characters and core, right? Um, um, yes. It's very, very it's strong. Very, and that was the thing, right? Because you yeah. have things like Sanguinary, Sanguinary Guard, a uh, death company that are very powerful. They're stalwart kind of units in your army, but the one downside was they're That's not right. objective secured. Uh, and before it meant that, um, especially with the fact that in ninth edition there's no um, there's no speculative charging, right? That's right. So it was actually much harder to actually reach the chaff things in the back to uh, completely kill them off the point and turn off that obsec. Well, now you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. You That's can right. just do at least give as well as you as you could take, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, the one thing to keep in mind here is you've lost a lot of things that were in your codex, but you gain the whole Space Marine codex. Yeah, exactly. And it's a really good codex. And this is a prime example of one of the massive things you've gained 
access to this tactical ability of controlling uh, the objectives, mm -hmm. right? You not only get this from this warlord trait, yep. but you can have chapter ancients that have this as well. Right. And you could put that on a sanguinary ancient. And so <laughs> sanguinary ancient could give out obsec as well really if you great. wanted to. So you could do that on both halves of the board if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. So already amazing abilities. Just take that plus two to move banner, so take your warlord trait, yeah. and uh, also you have the ability <laughs> to give plus one to hit. Yep. Um, and because you could make them your warlord, you already give the Sanguinary Guard plus one to hit. So we could give one Death Company unit plus one to hit and the Sanguinary Guard plus one to so hit. Good. Obsec to them all. It's all good. It's so um, And this is the kind of things, you, kind of utilities you get from that Space Marine mm -hmm. book. But let's stack it with some special things from the Blood Angels book. One of our favorite relics, the Vige's visage, visage, I like to say, of death. Yes. It removes Obsec within three inches right. of a character. This is crazy. This is so powerful. It's so good. We've already started to see Space Marine players realizing how good yeah. the Reaver Lieutenant is for a similar reason. Well, guess what? This guy does it without having to spend two command points every single time. That's right. And so you can, of course, pair this on the same the same uh, flank where you have your, your obsec, yeah. or you just take it over to the other side That's right. where you have... It's good on all sides else, of the board. Right? Well, and it's important in ninth where you need to be able to be able to push up on a couple of flanks yeah. at will. Um, so, so powerful. Of course, yeah. it's still getting the minus one to hit uh, against the bear because it is a, a death mask. Um, this relic is such a huge, huge buff yeah. to this army. Cannot really overstate that enough. <laughs> Absolutely. The other things you want to be able to do is when you get on a point, yep. you want to make sure that no one can fight you off of it or yep. snag it from you. And the Blood Angels have two really, two more really powerful mm -hmm. tricks to do this. The one, this one's kind of obvious, is the fact that the Sanguinary Guard have a six inch, not a three inch, a six inch heroic intervention. That's right. This is super powerful because it means that you could just post up around the point and it's really, really hard for anyone to get near right. you. Even if, let's say, you killed the screen, piled a guy just near the point, they can't get within three inches without yeah. you heroically intervening. Or let's say uh, they need to be uh, in half of the board, mm -hmm. and they just got within half, but then you could heroically intervene into oh, them, you yeah. could kill their points, or they need to be within six of the center. All kinds of things like this, where you can deny points with those Sanguinary Guard. And Six inch rogue intervention is amazing. <laughs> Having it on Sanguinary Guard is just unfair. Oh, it's so it's such a massive denial bubble, right? Yeah. And the thing is, like you said, it's, it is a six inch, which means, regard like if you are on an objective, essentially, you can intervene yeah. if someone steps on it. So that's incredibly powerful um, and and really 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 impressive, right? Yeah. Um, before this did work on other units other than Sanguinary Guard, but this is just one of the many yeah. reasons we love Sanguinary Guard in this new book. Yeah, right? and this is where things got nerfed, but they didn't matter because right. it's like, ah, they nerfed cares? it to the unit you wanted it yeah, yeah. on, anyways. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's if if they didn't nerf this book, this book would have been outrageous. Mm -hmm. So the other thing they have is our one of our favorite models yeah. since the. Indominus box came out is the Judiciary. Judiciary, right? yes. This gives you the ability to make a unit fight last. This is completely game winning <laughs> ability, <laughs> right? And they nerfed them a bit from six to three inches mm -hmm. in the in the Space Marine Codex. Tragic. So that actually is easy to work around yeah. because, you know, with big squads you could just come charge in another spot. Right. Well, the Blood Angels say no, no, no. <laughs> what we could do is give him a Warlord trait that gives him six inch rogue intervention, mm -hmm. and that means you just put him kind of in the front middle, That's right. and no matter where you charge, he'll heroically intervene and then be within three inches. Yeah. Um, this is crazy powerful. It means that you have this giant blob and you can't charge it. It's, it's amazing. It's already a really risky proposition because, again, Blood Angels get the plus one to wound if they charge or yeah. if they are charged. That's so, right. you know, there are some armies where you can say, okay, if you engage first, then at least you, you know, turn off that benefit, you don't get that. Right. And now you're not even fighting first. Um, this is where a, really a savvy Blood Angels player can really excel with the use of this Judiciary. Yeah. Because um, you want to be able to leave these bubbles where you can pile through but not get targeted by shooting. So some really interesting play to be had there. And if you play it well, it is just another really, really oppressive move. I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about how you can grab these points, mm. make sure it's your obsec, take away their obsec, make yep. sure that they can't fight you, they can't, you know, sneak this objective away from you. Sure. But they also can't shoot the objective away from you. Yes. Because both of the key units that you're mm -hmm. using, which is Death Company and yep. Sangard, are actually surprisingly durable. They really are. Right? The Death Company have uh, an ability to get a 5 of Feel No Pain, which is absolutely crucial. <laughs> you can do a lot of work with yeah, that. That's really um, And then the Sanguinary Guard, of course, have uh, uh, just a really good armor save. They got that 2 up armor save. Yeah. You know, if you've got that uh, priest next to them, they'll have a 6 up Feel No Pain mm. as well. And of course, they're space marines, so they could all have five up invulnerable saves exactly. from your librarian, right? <laughs> so they could be incredibly tough and durable this on that point. This is even outside of cover at that point. That's too, right. right. Which again, if you're worried about getting shot, 
keeping an eye on that positioning, trying to get in cover. And I'm really glad that you mentioned the apothecary thing, right? Because right. a lot of Blood, Angel, Blood Angels players will say, well, you know, the relic banner for Sanguinary Guard is gone. We can't get the 5 plus feeling right. pain, which, you know, that's a bummer. But what if I told you that you could all have a 6 up feeling pain, anyways? Um, on and top one of free else. model back a turn. And, yeah, exactly. A guarantee. No four one ups, guarantee. no re rollable four right. ups. It just happens. You auto heal. Um, yeah, heal one, res one. Right, because that was another problem, too, right. right? Was like, okay, you need to be able to heal them first and then res. Yeah. And, and now they're, they're actually more durable in many, many ways. Absolutely. And that's on top of, we're just talking about the marquee units. Yes. Right? If you take any of the Indominus units, they're all very durable. Bladeguard really? are the definitive ones mm -hmm. that are cheap and durable up on a point. Yeah. But I don't, like, we love Bladeguard, yeah. but Sandguard are just better. They're still just better. We talk about right. how madly efficient the Bladeguard are. Yeah. And still they pale in comparison to the Sanguinary Guards. They're, so like, they're, they're, a, they're not a distant <laughs> second, but they're clearly second. They're definitely second, yeah. yeah. Once you have 30 Sanguard, then you... <laughs> yeah. It's, they're, but, but, you know, all this to say they are really great. You do need exactly. to still take troops. Outriders are still great. Even, you know, Eradicators. Um, sure, of course. This isn't a shooting army, but even they become a threat. They're not so... They become a combat in, threat, It's too. not inconsequential to charge them. That's right. Yeah, exactly. They'll fight their way out of combat. You can't just tag them. Yeah, exactly. Or no, something. not at all. <laughs> so... Here, this is crucial. Put all the things combined that we've said. Mm -hmm. You okay. go up and you take the point Got with it. things that are cheap and can fight like crazy. Mm -hmm. Someone comes to take it back with yep. a hammer. You decimate that hammer with your unit that's hiding in cover and safe. That's right. Now that hammer of yours on that point, we've just demonstrated is not chargeable, not shootable, right? <laughs> um, you can't sneak in up on it. Right. So there's nothing you can do take the primaries from the Blood Angels, mm -hmm. right? There's virtually nothing I can think of, and that's what makes them so strong at the primary. Right. They're also really good at the secondary. They are quite good at the secondary. Yeah, so this is really that next thing we want to talk about. They are actually completely solid at the best secondaries. They really are. So let's talk about that. Um, the Space Marines already have some, well, they have one very powerful Space Marines secondary. are good at playing the mission. They are great at it. There's a, there's a two primary ones I think we want to talk about, really. Yeah. Uh, number one, is domination. Yes. Right? Um, in any mission in which you have an odd number of objectives, often it's going to be five, if you have right. you know, one in each quarter and then one in the middle, uh, domination is very powerful because it's something that's in your control, right? You need to be yeah. able to hold more than a half of the objectives at the end of your turn. Yeah. Well, that is exactly perfect for everything we just described, right? Yes. So your ability to just throw a hammer onto the point, take it, regardless of whether or not you die, um, and, and score those points. That's right. Now, let's not forget that you actually won't die because of all the reasons we just talked about, That's right. right? So really, really powerful it's, secondary. It's, domination is really great for armies that want to counterpunch, and this army can counterpunch yes. so high, and as we said, all the OPSEC reasons. All Space Marines are pretty good at domination, yeah. but this army is even better. It is, absolutely. And this would be powerful on its own, but for some reason, for some reason, there's another secondary that stacks so perfectly, you'd almost never take these the two things without each other, right? It's like... Uh, it's made, it's made, it's, it's made, made together. Made, yeah. yeah, it's like pancakes and syrup, right? Yeah. Um, this is, of course, uh, Oaths of Moment. Yeah, right? Oaths of Moment the, is an amazing secondary. It's so dumb, it's so powerful. You want to <laughs> yeah. explain it real quick? Um, well, let me explain this to you. Yeah. I've taken it, we've taken it every game we've yeah. played Space Marines and maxed it every single time. Yes. And that's including us forgetting that we had it, at least half <laughs> those games. Because if you just do Space Marines If you just stuff, play the game, yeah. you get 15 <laughs> points. And you can't say that about almost any other secondary. No, no. Um, this is uh, this is a Space Marine secondary. It's not a Blood Angel specific. No. But keep in mind, you can take a Space Marine specific secondary, which makes you got to keep in mind you now have like eight secondaries to pick from. That's right. Um, that gives you a lot of flexibility. It really does. And Oath of Moment is almost always going to be great, especially when there's an objective in the center, which, as you point out, is most of the time when you're going to play Domination. It's so. So good. they go really well together. But anyways, you just got to grab the center and yeah. hold it, kill characters, monsters, and vehicles. Yep. Check. Don't fall back. And don't fall back. That's where you want to be is in exactly. combat. Which again is another like sort of horizontal buff uh, on the Blood Angels vis-a-vis uh, -vis the White Scars. Right. Which are sort of built around the they flexibility of fall falling back. back. Right. And the Blood Angels are like, we don't even care, right? Yeah, we'll um, you're in here with us. We're exactly. not in here with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's really powerful. I don't know why they let, they allowed this to stack with Domination, but it does. <laughs> they, yeah. It's so, it's so really good. good. And so this is a ton of points that just reward you for playing that those middle objectives being aggressive, holding it. You don't have to throw everything in, right? Um, if you yeah. have like three squads of even five Sanguinary Guard, which we've been talking right. about, you could do five and then five more if they manage to wipe them and then another five after right. that um, because they are that efficient, right? And yeah. this goes with a lot of those units. Well, and this, um, this army, yeah. you know, we don't need to go in depth on a lot of them, but th this army can do a ton of others, right? Of course, it's fast enough and killy enough to do engage on all fronts, mm -hmm. right? It's also fast enough with a ton of infantry to be able to do things like deploying scramblers. Yep. It's also... One of the best armies at doing banners 
yeah. um, because it's fast enough to get uh, up on the center points early on. In fact, yeah. with things like Forlorn Fury, you could get infantry up on every point on the board first turn if you oh, wanted yeah. to, right? Like 100%. you could do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so they're really good at all of those. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the Blood Angel secondaries, we don't love them actually. Nah, we actually think they're not great, but not a strong point. Relentless Assault is situationally going to be an amazing pick. Mm -hmm. And this is you having more uh, units in your enemy's deployment zone than they have in yours. That's right. And there's some armies that are not intending to have any in yours right. whatsoever under any circumstances, <laughs> right? You've got like some Nurgle demon army or something like that. Yeah. They're barely going to get to mid-board. Uh, they're never going to be in your deployment zone, and you're happy to be over there yeah. even just with one squad. Absolutely. And because, again, you have these these hammer units that are kind of hanging right. out behind line of sight, not really doing much when they don't need to. Right. Um, you can very easily respond to their units getting in, in your deployment zone. You know, go clean them, uh, kill them, sorry, clean yeah. up, and then just dr deep strike in the back. Again, you can pair this nicely with some other secondaries, engaging or uh, scrambling. Right. You know, you have to make sure your categories all line up, but it's this flexibility of secondaries that really don't care who your opponent is, right? That's right. You're, all, you're happy if you can take two consistently that don't care about your opponent. Yeah. But the fact that you have what, this is like five or six very solid ones that can basically score You're never going to have trouble. Army. You're never going to have so trouble good. picking your secondaries with this yeah. army and that's not someone, something most people can say. No. Uh, secondary is the hardest part. They're really hard. And so here's, let's recap. We've got, we're getting all the secondary points. Yep. We're getting all the primary points. <laughs> we are making sure we kill all of your key units yeah. before they kill us. Um, and we're, you know, any any unit we pick in the Space Marine Codex is mm. good at doing this. That's right. Okay, so we have to say it. This army, Space Marines are ludicrously points efficient right. compared to the field of armies. Mm -hmm. Their units are so much better for the points when you take into account all their auras, buffs, strats, etc. Right. Blood Angels are somehow <laughs> even more points efficient. Now, we're mostly looking at the Sanguinary Guard here. Yeah. But if you haven't seen, a Sanguinary Guard is 30 points. This is a Blood Angel with a jetpack yep. in golden armor, <laughs> just to disrespect you. That's right. He's got a two-up armor save. Yep. Okay? This dude hits on twos when near any Warlord. Not just your Warlord, any Warlord in your they army. They were very specific yeah. about that, too. So you can put Warlord traits on all your peoples. They all give plus one to hit. Yeah. They have minus one to hit in combat by default. Mm. Okay? Their power swords are all flat two damage, and of course, plus one strength now. That's right? a huge deal, That's right? a huge deal. You're going across that threshold yes. to then wound normal Marines on threes, plus one to wound, so twos uh, with Blood Angels. With AP three or four. Yep. And they're a boatload of attacks, especially when you're in your Assault Doctrine. Which you will be. Yeah. So this is a <laughs> unit that's like hitting on twos, maybe re-rolling ones, wounding almost everything on twos. Right. And you could re-roll ones on that too if you wanted to. Yeah, why not? And then AP four, two damage with a million attacks. <laughs> on a cheap, cheap, cheap unit that's mega durable, heroically intervenes. Yeah. What, what more do you want? They are criminally And they're super fast. Yeah. They just have everything. They can have OPSEC on top of that, right? Absolutely, because uh, they are core. They are core, of course. <laughs> Why not? Uh, the Sanguinary Guard are way, way, way too good. They really are. Um, and I don't see any reason, if mm -hmm. you were trying to make the strongest army you can, that you wouldn't almost max uh, out Sanguinary Guard, because the next units down, Death Company, Fantastic. They're great. Very good. They're not Sanguinary Guard good. No. And then the next units below that, things like Vanguard Veterans, Blade Guard Veterans, mm -hmm. these are all amazing units. Yeah. But they are they're not Sanguinary Guard good. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just not as efficient or as tough. There's a number of number or as fast, right? Yeah. Um so it's we're really hard pressed to not just say that that really the most competitive Blood Angel list would not have 30 Sanguinary Guard yeah. uh, at time of writing. And right? and in fact, if you're trying to play with friends and keep them. You should have less than half the total amount of Sanguinary Guard. Like, you have 15, and it's really mean. I tried, uh, yeah, I tried 15 in our in our last game. <laughs> That's and right. It wrecked. It's so good. It wrecked. It's so and, good. And uh, you know, I I think you're going to be hard pressed not to take a bunch of those. I'm. I'll probably be cutting it down to 10 most of the time, mm. um, or three five man squads. Yeah. Just so that you don't even have at least one that gets all the attacks and goes crazy. <laughs> right, right. But that's still got advantages in its own right. I, I think I think it's super interesting. We've been seeing similar things with uh, Shining Spears being played yeah. right now. But these are like actually good. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like Shining Spears, but good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing you have to keep in mind is the Indominus units in the Space Marine box are already super good. As we right. said, Blade Guard, Outriders, whatever, Eradicators, all mm -hmm. this stuff is salt great. Salt Intercessors. Yeah, Salt Intercessors, amazing. Mm. Blood Angels take all of these up a notch. Right. The these right. are already very, very efficient base profiles that become more efficient with the Space Marine um, buffs. Yeah. And then again, with Blood Angels, you don't have to lean into things that you're not good at, right? You don't have to lean into more shooty things, right? 
um, they're just they, they do exactly what they need to do very very yeah. very efficient very well like it's just painful. look just look specifically at the Outriders yes. and look at the Blade Guard. Mm -hmm. These two in particular as uh, Blood Angels are unbelievable. The Blade Guard in particular benefits so much from that plus one to wound because yeah. they, they, have the, five. they have the strength five, yeah. two damage, right? So what they're doing is they're taking big things like vehicles mm -hmm. and they're wounding them like even up to knights right. and they're wounding them down on fours, fours, right? And then they're taking almost every other infantry in the game and they're wounding it on twos, yeah. right? And they're even taking those new T5 Gravis everywhere mm -hmm. down to threes. They also have that AP4 and yeah. that flat two damage. They have a boatload of attacks still, they, and even more. So you get that high profile attack, but you get one more on top of that, right? And, and the other thing is they are Primaris, right? So they right. get access to all those other strats, like things like transhuman. Yes. Now, it's funny, we're talking about how durable things like Sanguinary Guard are, despite the fact that they don't get transhuman. Um, they have all these other things that make them durable. And these, right. these in, all these units from the Indominus, of course, are, are transhumanable yeah. up to squads of five. You know, they make great backfield objective holders if you want to be just completely yeah. unremovable. And they have those three wounds, which is a great multiple sometimes. Yep. And they're perfect targets for an apothecary to res and mm -hmm. things like that. So yep. Blade Guard, amazing as Blood Angels, absolutely amazing. That plus one to charge also really helps with them being a little bit slower. Yeah, slower. It's I'm super into it. The Outriders, they love that plus one to charge. Oh, yes. Right? And they love the fact of they getting plus one to wound, mm -hmm. right? And that's just so crucial for them because they just have chain swords. Yeah. So now they can fight other Marines down on a three. Crazy. They already have the boatload of attacks, and now yeah. those attacks become high value attacks as that's well right. as just high volume. And it's just very, very impressive. And that's a good c candidate for your early, early game aggressors, yeah. right? Uh, obviously, if you're looking to engage, they're great for that. But just pushing up onto those points with very durable T5 bodies that you're easily resing. Yeah, and involved, they mean whatever. nothing to you. They they're mean so cheap. Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. And again, so that, that's kind of the, the core idea. Um, about that. Sanguinary Guard are the most efficient, yeah, but there's all these other amazing options that are that are really interesting. So keep that in mind as you go into your army composition. I, I hope everyone out there is painting up Sanguinary Guard right now as they're watching <laughs> this. They're like furiously yeah, getting yeah. more done. <laughs> like, uh, yes. you, need, you need more of them. Um, but not everything got better. No, a no. A few things, uh, well actually a bunch of things got legitimately worse. That's right. And so the funny thing is when you just take the books, like if you took this new mm. book, you compared it to the old codex, You'd be like, wow, this thing's not good. Right, that's like it, would, it would seem like it's not good. That's because you lost a lot of your amazing stratagems, virtually mm -hmm. all of them. Yes. I'm downright to say the stratagems in this book are like totally not interesting. They're not good. Right? Like if you took away all of them, yeah. I wouldn't care. Yeah, you'd be fine. Right? There's a couple good ones. Yeah. Right? The heroic intervention we've talked and about. And blood chalice for the extra sanguinary guard buff. Which that is it is good. You know, there's a you know angel sacrifice is cute sometimes. Cute. Well, that's the thing is a large section of the stratagems in this book are very situational. So could you make an argument that they are good? Yes, absolutely. But the thing is, they're so situational. You have to build around yeah. them. You have to play. They're to not them. army defining. They're not army defining. Right? So strats yeah. are less army defining. You're going to use them less. Guess what? You don't really need. But them. you get the whole space marine book <laughs> of strats. Yes, sure. The funny thing is, you don't actually get to use many of them either because yeah. your best units like Sangard. And uh, are not uh, the firstborn. Yeah, they're not yeah. Primaris, and there's so many Primaris and Gravis strats and things like that in there. So you're not getting, you're actually not getting the deepest bench of strats. Sure, but that's you're just not CP dependent. You just don't so need them. That's good. Um, the psychic subtly got worse. Yeah. Right. Um, you know the the li librarian dreadnought isn't that good anymore. Right. Um, and the you know the fly power isn't quite as mm. good, and you can't just give a whole unit plus one attack. Um, so yeah. there's little. I would say the psychic, the sanguinary discipline, you mm -hmm. don't actually need. No, no, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think if you do take a psychic, and again, you don't have to, you actually take the space marine powers, Correct. right? Yeah. You take things like psychic fortress because okay, sanguinary guard, it's a two up. But what if it was also a five plus two up, five right? up, right? Because there are certain armies, other space marines. Now there are certain armies that actually can go straight through that two up right. uh, uh, armor well, on sanguinary. Even more so on a death company. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. So giving a six inch aura of five plus plus of a five plus. Oof. That's really, really good. And then also, if you need two powers, why not just take Veil of Time and always okay. fight first? Yep, and, and reroll charges. And reroll charges, right? That sounds that sounds very Blood angel -y. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're going to take a Psyker, yeah. which we don't think you need one, nah. but if you're going to, take the Space Marine Discipline. Mm -hmm. It's actually a lot stronger for you. Yeah. Um, the Sanguinary Discipline is not that amazing. The other big hit, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people with uh, <laughs> shelves full of these, yeah. so Smash Captains. That is right. So the Smash Captains, if you're not familiar, it was... This very iconic unit through most of Eighth Edition, yeah. which was essentially even if you don't play space, uh, uh, oh, if you don't play that. space marines, <laughs> you still have three of them. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, this was very commonly allied, and it was like three Blood Angels <laughs> uh, captains with jump pack and the Thunder Hammer. They were very points efficient. They were very unreliable to kill, um, and they just did a ton of damage. 
So yeah. now a number of things change with this. Basically everything, right? Everything that made them good <laughs> is gone. That's right. The Thunder Hammer costs more. More. It's worse, right? Lost worse, end. Uh, worse AP, absolutely. Yeah. The Storm Shield is worse mm -hmm. on this particular model. It's That's better correct. on some, yep. but it's worse on this particular model. So you only get a four up in, uh, in vulnerable save. And you don't re-roll your hits anymore. Nope. So you're hitting on threes, yeah. not re-rolling. That kind of sucks big. It's very, un like you don't want to get in there and be like, well, guess yeah. I missed, right? Yeah. If I didn't mention it costs more. It costs more. Uh, it also... You can't transhuman. You can't transhuman, so, so your durability went down. That was one of the big things, right? And yeah. you'd say, okay, you can't wound me on better than fours. I have a three plus invuln. Yeah. And at that point, it was like, you really don't know if you can kill yeah. this thing, even and with like a Castellan. bringing him in from reserve, like he used to be really, really yes. good with on wings of fire. Right. You would be like, I'm fighting over here. Now I'm way in your backfield killing something crucial. Or I'm going to deep strike in that tiny little corner yeah. because he's on a teeny tiny base. Yeah. And I would 3d6 charge into something. Neither of those are options for you anymore. No. So he's out. He can't get, there's no relic for the Angel's Wing for reroll charges and ignore Overwatch. The no Overwatch. Yeah. Right? So every single piece of him has been chipped away and he's hard. just not good anymore. Yeah. But for the same points <laughs> as one Smash <laughs> Captain, you get five Sanguinary Guard. Oh, yes. So good news. Go get your Sanguinary Guard today. Five, what would you rather have? Five Sanguinary Guard yeah. or one Smash Captain? Oh, please. Right? It's obviously, obviously Sanguinary Guard. The five Sanguinary Guard is 10 wounds at a two up save. With a boatload more attacks. With way more attacks. Like, let's they just... hit the same as a captain. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, they, yeah. Each one of them has the same number of attacks as a captain. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so silly, right? I mean, even just look at the Assault Doctrine, right? You're like, yeah. cool, your captain's gonna get plus one attack. You're gonna get plus five attacks on the Sanguinary Guard, right? That's right. And all the other multiples and heroic interventions, the bigger footprint, and yeah. there's a million reasons why you just don't need this. This is a very 8th edition play style, and yeah. we've seen these characters go towards more support characters, and the Blood Angels, funny enough, is no exception, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's been very transformative. Yes, you know, it was fun as a, uh, if yeah. you're playing Blood Angels. Well, and it could still be fun. The Death Company captain, they have new rules they, to make they a cooler make Death attempt, Company. Yeah. And it's so much more fun and interesting, Yeah. but it's not actually vision. very good. Right, because again, it's very situational, right? Yes, yeah. they can be very, would you love to get a three plus plus back on your on your captain? Sure, that's great, Yeah. but it's very situational. So for fun, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is it bad? No. Is it the best option? No, right? And that's kind of where, it, where it's at right now. I think that's perfectly fine, right? Yeah. Better for it to not be oppressive, unlike the Sanguinary <laughs> Guard. <laughs> well, um, unfortunately, this army is oppressive. And yes. uh, even without their Smash Captains, they are very, very strong. Now the army, we admit, it's changed quite a lot. The yep. way you used to play it, those crazy deep strikes, moving from one side of the board, pick up, drop to the other, catching your opponent unaware, turn one, where they left a big gap. All of those cool tricks you could do, that's all gone. And yeah. I get, I agree, that kind of sucks. If they kept that stuff, this army would be downright unbeatable by anybody. What's higher than S tier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be something above what we call S tier. So this army, as of right now, it's as good as it gets. Yes, it is Space Marines, the strongest army in the game, mm -hmm. but it's the best of the Space Marines. Yeah. And it makes any of those combat units, it takes them to 11. Yep. It's unbelievably good. It plays the ninth edition game to a T, yeah. right? It's better at ninth edition than any other Space it's Marines so I can think of. For it, yeah. Crazy points efficient. It plays every part of the game you care about. Sure, it doesn't psychic. Sure, it doesn't shoot. Who cares? You win the game. <laughs> All without strats, right. all without psychic or shooting, and this army is still super crazy oppressive. So we're putting it down. Although it has bad matchups, we're saying right now we think this is the strongest army in the game. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and of course, we'll be playing these very soon on the tabletop. We yeah. played them a bit already, and we're really, really excited about them. You've been painting yeah. up your new. We're painting ones. up a bunch of new models because I'm really excited about this army. Of course, it's once you get you get you feel the power. You're like, <laughs> yes, yeah. I am a god. <laughs> If you're winning a lot with your Blood Angels, yeah. it's not you, it's them. That's right. They're, they're doing it for you. This army is carrying me right. to easy victories um, all over the battlefield. So um, you should go check them out. It's a pretty cool army. Um, they're probably a little too strong for your casual games yeah. if you're tooling them up. Be very so if you're playing your friends, take it down a notch. Um, take some Hellblasters? Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, you'll still win. But <laughs> It'll be good. Exactly. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you guys very soon on the tabletop.